this is Miss Litton, and you can't see what I see. Can you give us a shout out to the room too? Yeah. Yes, so go ahead. Yell your names out individually. I'm Wesley. Kate. <laughs> I'm LeBron. <laughs> James. I don't think so. Hey, All right, y'all are here. I'm Matt Taylor. Um, I'll share with you. I, yeah. Okay. Um, this no, is okay. yes. Unit 5. Okay. I'm trying to see how much of it we can hit. Unit 5 starts out with um, Chapter 5. This is the Inheritance Unit. And Chapter 5 is Mitosis and Meiosis. And you're also going to want to be familiar with, obviously, related to that is the cell cycle. And we'll go through some of those items. Um, and then also in Unit 5 was Chapter 22. And Chapter 22 was about development. Okay, and you want to start with sperm and egg. And it goes to a diploid zygote. And then all the stages that go from there. And then the last chapter in this unit was chapter 23. And that's all your inheritance. Okay, so those are all your Punnett squares and then the exceptions to the rule. So I don't know that we'll get through all of those, but we can certainly try. So um, I'm gonna go through, maybe what I would do is have somebody in your team um, hit like maybe hit that, like do we know what this is, do we know what this is, kind of make a list, a running list, and then you probably want to keep track of what areas that you think you might be weak in. You know, like I better go back over and look at that. So the first thing I want to talk to you about um, is the cell cycle. Remember G1, S, G2, and then the M stage has mitosis and cytokinesis. Do you remember what happens in G1? The cell grows, and in the S stage, Synthesis of what? The, the DNA. DNA. No. DNA. DNA. Okay. Um, and then in G2, you're making proteins. So, and then M is the actual nuclear division, and then cytokinesis is division of the cytoplasm. And we also talked very briefly that um, non-dividing cells will pull out a G1, and it'll just be GO. Do you remember this where I did this? G1, right, you make more organelles. During the S stage, you double up on your chromosomes. G2, you're making proteins. And then you go through mitosis and cytokinesis. We reviewed the stages of mitosis. And um, we also looked at controls. Um, we said that there were some checkpoints where you look to see, did the DNA get replicated? Is it lining up appropriately? And if if those checkpoints, if, if a cell fell, fails at checkpoint, it commits what? Apoptosis. Apoptosis, perfect. Okay, and we said a chromosome consists of two sister chromatids. chromatids. We said the Whoa. DNA winds itself up when the chromosomes become visible during prophase. It winds itself on those protein spools. Do you remember that? It's called nucleosomes. Do you remember this? <laughs> no. no. Oh, Miss Litton. Um, we talked about terms like haploid and diploid. What cells of your body would be haploid? Sex. Sex cells, good, sperm and egg. Okay, everything else in our body is diploid, has two copies of chromosomes. One copy came from your biological mother and one came from your biological father. That pair of chromosomes is called a, what kind of pair? Uh, uh, um, Mologous, Mologous pair. pair. They're the same size, <laughs> same shape, and they code for the same characteristics. Now, is this a homologous pair right there? I'm holding up two fingers smished together. Is that a homologous pair? No. These would be sister chromatids. But if, yes, that would be a homologous pair, and this would be a doubled homologous pair. Homologous pair, these are when they have sister chromatids, right? And the whole thing about mitosis, my arms, my legs, my mitosis, is all the chromosomes replicate, they line up single file and separate. So let's go through the stages, okay? okay. Um, the chromosome and prophase, oh. first stage, <laughs> prophase, the chromosomes become visible, visible. the nuclear yeah. envelope and the nucleolus disappear, radiating microtubules, oh, okay. 
Yeah, remember that? They meet in the middle uh, at Metaphase, away at Anaphase, two nuclei at Telophase, cytokinesis. Perfect. That is mitosis. All chromosomes line up single file and separate. And these are clone cells, right? Because it's all the chromosomes copying and separating. And um, animal cells do cleavage because they have membranes they can pinch off, but plant cells have to make <coughs> a cell plate and then a cell wall to separate themselves. Okay, then when we transition into myo, my, my, oh, oh wait, sorry, one other thing, binary fission. Binary fission would be like bacteria. They don't have linear chromosomes. All of your um, prokaryotes, like bacteria and archaea, all have circular chromosomes. And so it basically replicates and separates. Okay, just like this picture. That's binary fission. Asexual, um, just like mitosis, and this is only found in prokaryotes. Okay, gear it up. Sperm and egg. Barbie meets Ken. Um, when we talk... <laughs> Talk about um, cells being diploid and haploid. Sperm and egg are haploid. They two haploids get together and form a diploid zygote. zygote. Yeah. Remember we said zygote, and then just foreshadowing into the next chapter. Remember, cleavage, 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 and it forms a what? A solid ball, ball of cells, cells called a marula. Remember, we pump in the salt. Who follows? Water, and you form a blastula, which is a hollow ball of cells. cells. Then you do, that's it, she is participating. Yeah, okay, sure. then you fold <laughs> in like this, remember? And then, remember, oh, and this was the blastula and the cavity inside was called the blastocele, remember that? Yeah. Okay, then we fold in like this, we're letting out the gas yes. to form a gastula, which is a layered ball of cells. And the new opening is called a blastophore, remember that? And the new cavity is called the archenteron. <laughs> okay. Got it. The layer ball of cells, the outermost layer is the ectoderm. Oh. Innermost layer is the endoderm. endoderm. And the middle layer is the mesoderm. mesoderm. And remember, we, oh, yeah. we just have to learn endo and ecto, and then we know where everything else comes from. Yeah. Right? So what comes from our ectoderm? Uh, skin. skin. Islands. And your something system. Your Nervous system. Yeah. I'm on fire. Okay. This boy is on fire. And from the endoderm <laughs> comes what? Uh, what goes in? What two systems do you get to from your mouth? Respiratory. Digestive and respiratory. respiratory. Everything else comes from the middle layer, which is the mesoderm. Right? Okay. See, so now we're reviewing development too. Right? Does it remember that part? Yeah. And, that okay. So there, that's always, how you get to be the baby. That always scares me. Okay, here you can see um, homologous chromosomes and sister chromatids. This is a homologous pair. Here are homologous chromosomes. During the S stage of interphase, they become a homologous pair. Alleles, okay, are alternate forms of a gene. So this one has like a purple flower, this one has a pink flower, <coughs> but they're both coding for the color of the flower. And we talked about meiosis in a nutshell. There's meiosis one and meiosis two. Oh, yeah. Meiosis one, Homologous pairs um, line up in prophase, remember, and they snuggle, synapses, and what could happen when they're snuggling? Oh, Bra crossing, over. crossing over, which could increase variety because you're mixing up the chromatids a little bit. Okay, and that happens during prophase. In metaphase one, they meet in the middle, but with their dance partner, right? Anaphase one, you separate the mm -hmm. mom and dad chromosomes. Remember we said it's like a divorce? Okay, telophase one cytokinesis, that each of these cells undergo meiosis to. And so now, single file, and then you separate the sisters. sisters. Yeah, separate the parents in the divorce, that's meiosis one, separate the sisters, meiosis two, sister chromatids. And now each cell will have half as many chromosomes and it's considered haploid. And it's actually haploid right after meiosis one. Once you separate the parents, homologous pairs, it's haploid. Okay, and here is showing you meiosis one. You can see the homologous pairs in the middle separate. They are now haploid. Here we can see in each of those haploid cells they do meiosis two, separating the sister chromatids. And um, 
You can review those in your book as well. Um, we said, why, this is mom and dad, dog, and here are their puppies. Why are their puppies so different from each other? And we said there were three key reasons to have variety when you have sexual reproduction. Crossing over. Crossing over. One of Mendel's things. Independent assortment. Remember each homologous oh, yeah. pair can line up independently of the other? Yeah. Remember yeah. Mendel's law, independent assortment? So crossing over, independent assortment, and then you never know what sperm is gonna hook up with what egg. So random fertilization, so that's why there's so much variety here in the offspring. And here, here, here. Showing you, yeah. Here's showing that when they can snuggle and they can line up any which way they want. Here's showing you crossing over. Here's showing you any which way they want. Here's fertilization. This compares mitosis to meiosis. In mitosis, you have one division and the cells are all exactly the same when you're done. In meiosis, you have two, division, two divisions, and in this one, then you have the variety right. due to crossing over independent assortment and random sperm egg. Spermatogenesis and oogenesis, the formation of sperm and egg. When you make sperm, you will make full four sperm for each cell that undergoes meiosis. But when females do it, we do uneven so cytokinesis. So one egg gets all the cytoplasm and the other one does not. And then you do the, repeat that procedure again. And that's because the egg is gonna provide the nutrients. The sperm just kind of provides the chromosomes um, until they get more nutrients. And that was the end of chapter five. Okay, nice. easy peasy, put in pie. Okay, Tw 22 now. Excuse the interruption. No, I don't Mr. Peters, you're needed in the counseling office. Mr. Peters, you're needed in the administration office. I wish I had a dollar for every spinner. <laughs> Just use your pencil and paper. Stop spinning. <laughs> okay, chapter 22. Ready? You guys are nailing it. Is the video paused? Yeah. Or is it still no, it's still going. Okay, so chapter 22, um, we talked about how you make a baby and fertilization process, la di da let's skip here. Um, we talked about how when a sperm hits the egg, remember we had sperm cam? When the sperm hits the egg, um, as soon as it penetrates and joins with the um, egg membrane, then it has a wave of depolarization across it to prevent any other sperm from entering. Um, that that um, is the fast block, and then the slow block, it'll kind of isolate it um, um, so that it cannot get penetrated any further. Um, that's all you need to know about that. We just reviewed this, right? Mm -hmm. We just went through the stages of that. In humans, we have an inner cell mass um, inside of our blastula that actually becomes the baby. We already reviewed this, the ectoderm. Hi, sweetheart. Hi. Are you reviewing? I am. Okay. Do you need me for something? Uh, just like quick question. Okay. I can come back whenever. I okay. Interrupt. Okay. Tomorrow, maybe. Sure. Is All it right. super quick that I can answer right now? Uh, not really. Okay. Just, yeah. All right. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, babe. Okay. So we just went over ectoderm. We went over mesoderm and endoderm. Are you good with that part? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Then let's skip, 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 skip. We started talking about differentiation. And we know that all the DNA in all of our cells is exactly, exactly the same. So why is it that cells go down different developmental pathways? Why do you have cells that become cheek cells and cells that become cheek cells? Mm -hmm. Why, when they have the exact same DNA? Do you remember? It's, the it's whatever's in the cytoplasm, right? And the cytoplasm can then trigger certain DNA to be active inside the nucleus. And we looked at the tadpoles, remember that? And I drew a picture like this. We said this is the egg. Whoa. This is the egg, and we talked about yolk being down here. And then anterior and posterior. Yes. And dorsal. Okay. Dorsal. <laughs> 
Yeah. We talked about yoke being down here. Yes, she's so right. Okay, so where the sperm penetrates the egg, this is going to be the anterior end, and the other end is going to be the posterior. Um, this is the ventral part, and this is the dorsal. Okay, and this is called the vegetal pole. If you remember, not vegetable, but vegetal. Um, and this dorsal. is the animal pole. I was right, dorsal. Okay. Right. And yes. as a result of this, you already have four quadrants right here in that initial fertilized egg. Because this one right here has, only thing it has is sperm. This has sperm and yolk. This just has yolk. Has what does nada. this have? Nada. nada. So it's already a little bit different. So when you start to do cleavage and to divide in cells, the chemicals in them are slightly different. So those influence what DNA is transcribed and translated. Um, we looked at, there's something called a gray crescent. And normally the gray crescent in tadpoles each initial cleavage gives each of them a gray crescent. So it doesn't happen normally, but if you separated them, each would develop into a normal tadpole. If you divide it differently so that one gets the gray crescent and the other one gets none and you pull them apart like they're gonna be identical twins, this one won't develop, but this one will. And that's because the gray crescent is where it's gonna do that invagination to form, what's this? The gastric layered ball of cells. So it never goes through gastrulation. And we talked about morphogenesis, is like how cells move around in your body when you're um, developing. We talked about um, morph uh, uh, morphogens are the chemicals that influence what genes are active, and that would be out there in your cytoplasm. We had a really important word, okay, called induction, remember this? And this is the notochord, which is part mesoderm, gets your spinal cord to form. It, it does induction. We talked about the lens inducing your optic cup. So this is like peer pressure, cellular peer pressure. We talked about the importance of apoptosis. That's how the frog loses his tail or you get digits. And then we finished up with what you do after you're in a solid relationship for long amounts of time. You can have a baby. We talked about similarities in membranes, whether you're a reptile, a chicken, or a human. And then we went through some developmental stages, but I'm gonna jump to the end. Remember we said blast into the first week. In week one, you're a blastula. Um, week two, you let out a little gastrula when you do week two, remember that? Okay, week three, if you take this three and turn it sideways, it would be like a cursive N, Narula. Um, and then remember I changed it into a heart as well. That's when your heart pumps. Week four, four limbs. Week five, five senses, remember that? And then months, now we're in months three or four, you have bones and you can tell male and female, placenta develops at week 10. And then weeks, uh, or sorry, months five through seven, the eyes open. And then you have a baby. And why? Because a sperm went in to an egg that got there via a penis. Mm. Don't do that. Um, three stages of birth. Always there's something coming out. Okay? Stage um, one, um, the cervix is dilating, and as a result, of, and then the, the sac breaks, and the amniotic fluid is coming out. Stage two, a baby comes out and stage three, a placenta comes out. So it's fluid, baby, placenta. Fluid, baby, placenta, stages one, two, and three. And there's a baby, and there's a baby, and then you get old. So there were three hypotheses on aging. One is it's in your DNA, long-lived people have long-lived children. Whole body process, you have a slow hormonal decline, and extrinsic factors. And what we said overall, what we were gonna remember is, those are all things that happen to you in your age, that if you have good health habits um, on a regular basis, then you're more likely to have a better quality of life and a longer life. Now, that takes us through the first two chapters. I think we should have more time for the next chapter, which is about genetics.
So we'll hit that next review. Good job, you guys. Two chapters of reviewing. Super proud. Unless you want me to try to get through the last chapter, I'll do it. Sure. Yeah. Are you up? Okay. I'm so psyched. Let's eat some licorice. <laughs> you want black licorice? Fish? I do have licorice. You suggest black licorice. Did no, you? I don't, you don't, have black. Black. I don't like black licorice. Who likes black licorice? Yeah. My grandma. I was asking. I don't think I like it. You definitely like it. I like like one piece. We're it's getting licorice. Like Okay, just go back to the room. Oh, yeah, we're good. I was like, oh, gosh. <laughs> Someone let me back into the nose. This isn't fun. Yes. Ooh. Okay. Go ahead. Definitely take it. Someone let me back into the nose. We're eating licorice. All right, oh, we'll move on. I paused it. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't pause it. <laughs> they do know. <laughs> Oh, you got for coming reviews. That's right. You get the licorice when you come to reviews. All right. If I feel like it. Let me back in. Contribute to the notes. All right. Ready? Yeah. You don't like licorice? No. You don't. All right, baby. I love licorice. It's depressing. It's depressing. It's depressing. Licorice. She said it, no, she said I don't like. All right, we're going to finish this. Yeah, we are. Okay, focus. <laughs> Mendel, you know who that is? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, yeah. Peace. So, he came up, he, he did a bunch of studies, da-da-da. We looked at dominant and recessive traits, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we came up with three laws. Do you remember the three laws? No. no. Law of dominance. Mm -hmm. So, like, tall would be dominant over? Short. Short. Now, to be tall, what are the two ways you could be tall? Homozygous dominant, which would be what? Big T, big T. What'd be the other way? And then what would that be? Big T, little T. There's only one way to be short because it's a recessive trait. It's hidden. I'm not looking at you. There's only one way to be short, and that is what? Little T, little T. Good. Okay, that's the law of dominance. What's the next law? Separation. Segregation. Segregation. And this you know because we just reviewed meiosis, right? And we know the homologous pairs separate. So mom chromosome and dad chromosome get separated from each other. Yep. That's the law of segregation. Right. Law of independent assortment. Each homologous pair can line up independently so you don't know what combination you're going to get. Okay? Law of dominance, law of segregation, law of independent assortment. Know those. Um, do you remember how to do this? Mm. Is that easy peasy? Are no. you writing mean things about each other in your notes? No. Well, let me back into the notes. <laughs> they kicked me out. Were you being abusive? Was I yes. kicked out? Well, no. that's what happened. Hey. Okay. That's all I have to pick up for. Like, that's my job. <laughs> <laughs> what was he doing? I put a picture in. They're like, oh, give me a picture. I'm like, I'm a pick up flick. That's my job. Pick a flick? Flick a pick. <laughs> flick a pick. 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 Oh, uh, <laughs> anyway, let's go back here. Okay. okay. Do you know how to do this cross? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, well, yeah, we know like the Shall TT, or whatever, but then the genotype right. and phenotype. Big T, big T. Can I demonstrate? No. Alright, you can show. Okay, set. <laughs> yes? Yeah. What are the genotype ratios? Well, you got dominant. The one. genes. Uh, one, two, yeah. one. Yeah, one, one big T, big T. Two, 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 two big T, little T. Little and one little T, little T. Exactly. Phenotype ratio? Uh, one, um, one tall. Dom three tall, tall. One, one short. One short. Stop it. <laughs> He's perfect just the way he is. No. <laughs> All right. Look at this. Do you understand it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mendel's law of segregation. So you're going to separate the homologous pairs. Now remember, um, it's going to be two divisions, right? So in the first division, you would separate the homologous pairs, and in the second division, you would separate the sister chromatids, right? That would be meiosis. Okay. Meiosis one, you separate the homologous pairs. That's the law of segregation. Meiosis two, you separate the sister chromatids. Mm -hmm. And then they can line up any which way they want to, independent assortment. We already learned that. We already learned that. 
We already learned that. Look at this. Um, what are all the possible gametes from that genotype? They're big W and big W. They're always, all their gametes are going to be what? Big W. Yeah, it's going to be big W. Those are the only gametes you can get. Okay. What are the gametes we can get from here? Big W, big S. Big W, big S. Big W, small S. Yes. Could you ever have this as a gamete? No. No, what law says you can't? Segregation. What? Law of segregation. Good. What law says you can have a big W with a big S or a big W with a little S? What says law of independent assortment? Boom, shagalaka. How many different gametes can we have here? Big T. Big T, and another one would be little T. How many different gametes here? Big T, big T, little G, and little T, little G. How many gametes here? Big A. Do you remember how we did foil? You could have big A, big B, outside. Big A, little B, inside. Little A, big B, and last, little A, little B. Remember that? Four different gametes. Familiar? Yeah. Okay. Now, is this a gamete or a genotype? Because there's only one thing, just like this, it's T. Okay. This right here, you have a big L and a little L, so that's a genotype, right? Homologous pair. Yeah. Okay. Big T, little T, like, would yeah, be a yeah, genotype. Yeah. Just a big T would be a gamete. What's this one right here? Genotype. Uh, gamete. Uh. Gamete, because you have one, one P, P one and w. one type of W. If I had big P, big T, let's say big W, little W, then that would be a Geno genotype. Okay, what's this? Genotype. Genotype. Whoa. Boom shakalaka. Oh, it's good. Big All right, big moving on. Oh, let's go here. A test cross. A test cross is when you have an unknown genotype. Now, if somebody has blue eyes, is their genotype unknown? No, because that's the only way to have blue eyes. Two little bees. But if somebody has brown eyes, is their genotype unknown? Yes. Who would you have them mate with? For the brown eyed person? Blue eyed person, right? Because we don't know if, well, we don't know if they're this kind of brown eyes or this kind of brown eyes, because either way they're going to have brown eyes, right? So we have a mate with a blue eyed person, because a blue eyed person's always going to give a little bee. If they're this, then all the offspring, every single time they would give a big B, all their offspring will in fact have brown eyes. But if they're this one, then I'd expect half of them to be big B, little B, and half to be little B, little B, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I have purple flowers, and I don't know if it's purple purple, or purple white, right? Then I always cross it with a white flower, and if half of them turn out to be white offspring, then I know that it was a heterozygote. That's a test cross, right? Okay, now, when you cross a bunch of things like this, then that would be, you would, have, you would have to put out all the gametes. So you would have big R, big Y, big R, little Y, little R, big Y, and little R, little Y, right? And then you would have that crossed with the same thing down here, right? That'd be a honkin' bojam and punnett square. So remember we talked about um, the product law. And so what you do when you have a cross that's, that is that big is you cross just the R's, the first one, And then you cross just the Y's. Yes? Mm -hmm. yes? Okay. So if 
I wondered how many are going to be round and yellow. Okay. Which ones are going to be round and yellow? These will be round, round, round. These will be yellow, 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 right? Three fourths times three fourths equals nine sixteen. Nine out of sixteen is what you would predict that would be round and yellow. Good? Okay. Um, I'm not going to ask about that. Blood types. Okay. Blood types, remember we said this was an example of codominance when you look at AB blood because the big I A is dominant and the big I B is dominant. That means on a red blood cell it has A markers and B markers. Okay. This is also a good example of multiple alleles because we don't just have big I and little i to choose from. We could have big I A, big I B, and we could have little i. So there are multiple alleles. Before we had dominant recessive or something like that. We had two choices. Now we have one, two, three choices. And to get type O blood, this way right here. Okay, so what about this? No, let me do another one. This one. No. <laughs> I'm going back here. Cross a heterozygote type A. How would I write a heterozygote A? Big I need more than that. Big I, oh, big I. A, uh -huh. big I. and little I. That's a heterozygote A. Got it. And I'm crossing it with a what? Heterozygote B. How would so I write big that? I, big I, big I, big I. Exactly. If it was a homozygote B, it would be like this. Right? Yeah. Okay. So now I'm doing that Punnett square. So I have big I, A, little I big I, B, little i. This individual right here would have A, B blood, right? This would be a heterozygote B, this would be a heterozygote A, and this would be a little o. Okay, then we talked about things like incomplete dominance, and it looks like blending. This would be like tall versus short gives you medium. Okay, it looks like that. In this case, um, a person who has straight hair, H1, H1, is crossed with somebody who has curly hair, and neither one of them is completely dominant over, yes, exactly, wavy. So what happens when we cross two wavy babies? <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, H1, H2, H1, H2, right? This is like crossing two pink flowers, right? So this, this individual would have what? Straight, straight, straight. Wavy. 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 wavy, curly, curly, curly. Uh -huh. All right, so that's incomplete dominance. Then we look at our um, sex link traits. So you have two X's as a female and an XY as a male, and we don't need to worry about anything on the Y because those are holandric traits. But traits that are on the X we put as a superscript. And if you recall, one of those things is colorblindness. Mm -hmm. So, and this is annoying because they use the letter B. And in my mind, I think B blind. But just think normal vision. So this is normal vision. This right here is a female who has normal vision, but she's a what? Because she's, she's a carrier. This is a colorblind mm -hmm. female, normal male, and colorblind male. Can males be carriers? No. No, they can't be carriers. Okay, so let's cross this. A normal vision man, what would that be? Um, big, uh, little X, or I, big, big, X, big. First of all, this is a man. <laughs> okay, okay normal B. vision, what are we going to put there? B on the X. Uh, big exactly, big B. big B, normal vision, right? Crossed with who? We're gonna, with a, for sure it's gonna be a girl if you're gonna do it genetically. Yeah, so she's a carrier, so a big B and a little B. So I'm gonna have X big B, X little B, X big B, Y. So this would be a what? Normal vision. Normal female. This would be a? Carrier female. This would be a? normal male and this would be a colorblind. colorblind male 
So whenever you do sex linked crosses, you got to put it up on as a superscript. Okay. Good, good, good. Then we looked at pedigrees. No, it's easy. Easy peasy. Just it's all logic. Okay. Now this is called X linked recessive. Okay. But we could have figured that out. First of all. We would guess that this is a sex link. Well, we would guess it's a recessive trait because it what skips, generation. skips generations. Because it skips, it's going to be recessive. Now we just need to know: is it autosomal or sex linked? What would make us think that it is sex linked? Because it's both males. Yes, it's in males. Remember, and males are more likely to get a disease because they only have. One X. A girl to get a disease has to have two X's. Yeah, so that would be a typical um, sex linked. Oh, we're almost done. We're almost done. Um, trait. We also looked at things that are polygenic. Poly means what? Many genes. So it's not to have your trait, it's not just one set of letters, but poly, many letters, A's and B's, or A's and B's and R's. And there you see like a curve because you have more options. And then we looked at environment, and um, shave a rabbit's back, put an ice as a backpack, it'll glow back black. black. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so it grows back black. So that's the environment. And then we looked at the environment in like reptiles. It determines whether they're going to be males or females. And we talked about nature versus nurture on that, and how much of our traits are environment. And we said linked genes are genes on the same chromosome, so they travel together. So this little A would travel with this little B. And that was the end. Yay! You did all of Unit 5. I'm so proud of you. Yay. Hashtag oh. awesome sauce. You should have been here. It was super cool. And have a piece of toast.